I'm going to show you some features commonly used in a word processor. I have copied text into the document and the first thing that we should always do is save the document. I click the office button and select save as. I'm going to save to the desktop so I select the desktop over here and name the document and I'm going to name it tutorial. Once I have saved the document by clicking the save button and if I've edited the document, I only need to press this button to save it again before I close or exit the document. If I need a backup of this document, and we would always have to make a backup if these are important files that we don't want to lose, then we would use the Save As option again. Save As, and we could choose a different location like a USB memory stick or an external hard drive. I am now going to start by changing the font type and to change the font type of all the text in the document I select Ctrl A on the keyboard. There are two types of fonts, serif font and sans serif. Serifs have small decorative flourishes on the ends of some of the strokes that make up the letters. An example would be the Times New Roman font. So I'm going to show you how these appear. Here is Times New Roman. And as you can see, they have a decorative flourishes on the ends. Some serif does not have these details or flourishes, and that would be a type of font like Arial. So I press A and select Arial. And as you can see, they are a little bit easier to read in a document. Now a document is made up of number of paragraphs, and you can see I have here three paragraphs in view. And you can use the paragraph feature to alter line spacing, alignment and indentation. You can justify the text by selecting this option over here. Center it or have it right aligned. Here is centered. And here you can see we have aligned text to the left and aligned text to the right. This is the paragraph option that I've told you about. And here we could change the line spacing. And 1.5 lines, you can see how it appears over here, changes and the text is easier to read like this also. Now there are many font effects from the font menu and we open the font menu over here. For example, if you need to enter mathematical formula or chemical representation, it can be convenient to use superscript and subscript over here. I'm going to show you how that's done. I'm going to go here to a place in the document where this can be used. If I select here the number 3 and I'm going to use superscript as it raises the above the normal line, this letter. So now if I click the font menu and I choose superscript, you can see how it raises here. OK. And another type would be using the subscript and to do that I first have to choose the number again to the font menu and the, the effect subscript OK and you can see how now it's below the normal line. Now to do this effect on the number 4 also an easy method is to choose the format painter and now we select 4 and as you can see it's got the same format. If you have to change text to a bullet list you select the text like this one over here and then you go to the menu for bullets. Here we've got one type of bullets. You can also have numbered ones. I'm going to click to show you. This is the numbered ones and here with bullets. And there are other options that you can choose from, letters and numbers. You will always have to add a header and a footer in the practical exam. And to do that by selecting the insert menu, you press header. And usually you will have to add the activity number in the header. So I'm going to show you how that's done. Activity number four, for example. Now I can close the header and footer or I can go straight to the footer. 
And usually in the footer, we need the name of the candidate, we need the center number, and then colon. I'll have to change this to Portuguese as I have a Portuguese keyboard. Change it. Now we have a colon. Then we would put the candidate number and also colon. Then we can close the header and footer. You might have to add a table to your document as it improves the layout and they are useful for displaying statistical and numerical data. To do that we also go to the insert menu, we choose a table and then we choose how many columns and how many rows we want to display by selecting it over here. And you can see how it changes when I drag over the squares. This would be enough. Let's just put here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And we could put numbers over here using the number keyboard or keypad 60 using the tab button 50, again tab and 40. Now, if you want to add the row to the table, you have to be placed in the last cell and then you press the tab button on the keyboard. You can also select cells and right click and get options to delete the cells. And then you could say here, delete entire row and OK. If you want to merge these cells, you can select them all and right click and select merge cells. You can also merge only two cells and then the same thing, right click and merge cells. You can shape the table in different colors by selecting the rows that you want shaded or the whole table and you can see how there are different types of shading over here. You can also choose the color that you would like. Then usually we would highlight the titles and do a different format, maybe put them in bold. And there are many different ways. You can also go to the font option over here and you can emboss or engrave or get some different features. You can also increase the text size over here, have a different type of font and then you press OK and you see how it comes out differently. Uh, you might have to add an image and images can be added to the document. First I'm going to place the cursor where I want the picture to appear. And uh, we use insert and we select picture. And I'm going to insert this picture so I double click on it. We can minimize it by dragging from the corners. And we drag until the image is the size that we want it to be. We can also crop the image by using the crop tool and then we go into the corner and drag up as much as we would like. I would like to decrease the ceiling here so I drag down a little bit. We can also use the picture styles over here. Choose a nice frame for the image and there are many more over here. I'm going to choose this one. Now you can adjust the colors by pressing the brightness and decrease the brightness. You can also change the contrast over here. You can see how the image changes right away when you go over the option. Now, if we would like to change the way the text wraps around the image, we will have to select the image. We can position it here so it flows with the text, which looks much nicer. Text wrapping also does the same thing and usually I select tight so I'm able to drag the image to wherever I want it to be in the document. And you can also insert shapes from the insert menu. So if I click where I want the shape to appear, uh, I would like to choose this shape for example. And then I click and drag where I want the shape to appear. I can color it in many different colors and choose my own colors over here. I can also, instead of coloring the shape, 
I can insert a picture so it will fill in the shape. So I'm going to select this image and it comes out quite nicely. And as you can see, there are many different styles and types of shapes that you can choose from. And in this case, we will have to choose tight and arrange the image like we would like it to appear in the text. Uh, from the insert menu, we can also add a hyperlink to the text. So we select the text and we click hyperlink. We can write the link over here. And as this was the last link that I used, yes, I can select that and press OK. And as you can see, you have to hold Ctrl down and then you have the hand and if you click, you will go to this website. You can also use a picture as a hyperlink and then you do the same thing. You press the hyperlink option and write the address over here. Now, uh, if you need to add a symbol you, and you cannot find it on the keyboard, you can always open this menu over here and see if the symbol is in the shortcut menu or press more symbols where you can find many symbols. Styles is a format for text and we can find that in the home menu. Here you can see the styles. Now styles can be very convenient when writing essays and long, long documents. I'm going to open another document with few tasks to show you how to create a report using these styles. So I'm going to open this one here, Report Digital Divide. Open the window full. Let's start here. The report should contain a title page with a title for the report, one image and your name. So I'm going to go up the document. Now I'm going to Put the cursor in front of the title and press Ctrl, Shift and Enter on the keyboard so I get an empty page here on top. We could also use a different style by going to Insert and choosing here a cover page that has been done for you. And you've got few options over here. But I'm going to create it exactly like they asked me to do. And it was to have the title in the beginning. And we can just use this title over here. I'm going to cut it, Control X. I'm going to go here more or less in the middle of the document by pressing Enter down. Then I'm going to press Control V. And here I have the name. Let's use Creating a Report About, capital T. And it's this is a good enough title. Then we need an image, so I press Enter twice. Insert, Picture. And here I have one ready-made. I can increase the size a little bit. And I can use the text wrapping tight to move it around. And then we needed my name also. I'm going to have a picture in between, more or less. And the name underneath. So Okay, so here we have the title. The title should, of course, be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to increase the text size. This looks much better. You can also have this in capital letters. So it's the title for the report. And you could change the font, but in this case, we are asked for Verdana. I'm going to now see what next to do. We've done this over here, so I can select it and highlight it. All pages have to include the page number at the bottom center of the page and date in the top right corner. So let's start including a header. And the top right corner, so I press the tab button and I'm now at the right side. I'm going to click on date and time and choose this date. Now it's in the right corner. And instead of closing header and footer, I'm going to go to footer from here. And there, in the center, we should put the page number. So I'm going to use the tab button. Or we could go in page number and bottom of page. And here we have different layouts. This one is left aligned and this one is here. In the center, like we want it to be. Close header and footer, since this is done. And now we can also highlight this. 
Next task. All body tags must be Verdana font size 12. Line spacing has to be 1.5. Let's start there. Control A is to select all the text in the document. Now we don't have much text anyway. So we need text for these titles. So I'm going to get text from the other document we were using. Let's take this paragraph, copy, open the document over here, and control V to paste. And I'm going to do the same for the other titles. I put the cursor behind, enter, control V, which is paste. Conclusion has to include some text. And now I can again choose control A. All the text is selected. I needed Verdana, so I press Verdana. Size was supposed to be 12. Then the line spacing was supposed to be 1.5. Press line spacing, 1.5. OK, that's done. Let's see what the next task was to do. Style heading 1 for the titles and change the format to size 14 and bold. OK, now I'm going to show you how to use the styles. We're going to select the first title. Here we have a heading 1 already styled for us, but we want to do it differently. So we right click and we choose modify. We choose the black color over here. We want it to be bold, and it was, so we keep it as is. 14 is the correct size, but here we were supposed to choose Verdana. OK. Now, here I've got one heading. Now I need to do the same thing for all the other titles. OK, see how simple this is when you format it one? You do the same for all of the titles. OK, next thing, let's highlight this since we've done it already. Include a contents page with page numbers, and that's the last task. So contents page should be beneath the title page. So I'm going to be here, press Control shift enter and then we have a new page. This text I can delete since it's nothing to do with the report. And backspace to get the text not up until this page. Keep it down here. Now that's perfect. It's at the top of the page. Here we have an empty page and here we can create our contents page. To do that we select references. We also click on Table of Contents, and you can choose one of the formatting options over here. I'm going to choose the first one, and as you can see, it is placed here, the page number, all the titles are included, and the name contents. You can put a little bit of space by pressing Enter, and now we have the title page. This changed, remember, when we selected all the text with Control A. So I'm going to have to increase this text size again. Always after you've completed the tasks, verify that everything is the way it should be. Now the heading shouldn't be appearing on the first page either. But as it doesn't tell us that it's not supposed to, we can keep it like this. But we can also select different first page which is over here and that clears the heading and the header and footer on the first page so now I can choose close and go through the report we got the contents page with the page numbers we got page number on every page the date and we could decrease the space here by clicking backspace like this and if we make changes to the document, or to the report in this case, we will need to update the contents page, because the numbering could have changed. If we add text or we do something, always in the end we have to update the contents page. So I'm going to do that now, so you know how to do that. We right-click on this, this square, and we're going to choose Update Field and update entire table. OK. Nothing changed as we didn't make any changes that altered anything. OK, that's it. Thank you.